I want to share an option for making a rigid cover for a cold plunge that is based on the Rubbermaid 100 gallon stock tank. And this approach will allow you to have a project that you can complete very affordably in your living room, no power tools required, um, which is helpful for anyone who doesn't have great um, do-it-yourself skills. As I suspect most people do, I started off with the off-the-shelf version from Amazon, but as a former mechanical engineer who particularly liked thermodynamics, I quickly became aware of how much more ice I was going to need if I stuck with that as the cover solution. I'm Katie Weatherup, and I mostly talk about shamanism in my healing practice, but I got involved with cold plunging um, for a lot of the health benefits and mood benefits and all this cool stuff. And before I had my healing practice, I worked as a mechanical engineer, and thermodynamics was one of my favorite subjects. So when I started on the cold plunge, I really wanted to have the advantage of a rigid cover that provides way better insulation. In fact, combining the rigid cover I created with um, wrapping the um, outside of the tub in some insulating material, it's been holding 25 to 30 degrees below the heat of the day, and we've had some very hot days here in San Diego. So I'm very pleased with the results. This can be very simple and very affordable. So as far as the basics, you need some rigid foam insulation, a tarp, and some tape. I happen to use two tarps to make it a little bit more elegant, but that's optional. And um, the hardest part, honestly, was getting the insulating foam back from Home Depot. Um, it comes in an eight foot sheet, which is too large to get into most vehicles. So I ended up cutting it down at Home Depot. Unfortunately, they won't help you with this. So you'll want to take a knife or um, a certain kind of exacto knife to cut it down. I had them measure it to 54 inches because that was just a little bit larger um, than the top of the cold plunge um, based on the Rubbermaid container dimensions, and I wanted to keep the top piece completely um, rigid and solid, and then I ended up um, needing to kind of supplement the size and, and tape on a piece for the uh, the lower part of the um, the cover. However, if you're needing to get this into a passenger car, you can cut it down smaller and it'll still hold rigid. You just have to make sure that when you tape the top and bottom pieces together or glue them together, that you don't have any of the, the seams lined up. So you're having a, a solid area across any part that is um, taped together to make one solid piece. Um, and uh, just as a note, I recommend that you get the X-Acto knife that can keep getting longer and longer. Um, I'll link to a particular one that I used. Uh, because of the thickness of the foam, a normal X-Acto knife won't cut all the way through. You can use a regular knife, but if you do, it's a lot harder to cut, so it's a lot more labor intensive, and you're gonna end up with a heck of a lot more white popcorn to clean up at the end. Um, but the transport of this giant piece of foam is uh, really the most complicated part. The nice thing is you can do this in, in the living room, no power tools and no particular expertise. So the approach that I took was um, to, you can turn the, the Rubbermaid container upside down and trace the outer edge. Um, you can also place it on top and trace around, but it's a little bit harder to, to steady. And then to get the inside uh, size of the second piece that you're sandwiching together to make this cover that lays over the top and then drops down into the, um, into the tub itself, providing some really good insulation, a uh, couple of options, you can measure the thickness of the wall, trace that all the way around and cut the second piece, or you can actually uh, lay inside the tub. Um, for most people, there's plenty of room to do this. I was surprised, but, um, you know, and trace around the, the outer edge of the tub and then cut to those dimensions. 
I actually stuck screws around the outside of the foam to hold it in place so I could lay inside and trace it. But there are a couple of different um, options. Of course, if you had someone to hold it, that works too. But um, I was in the mood to get on with the project. So I used just pushing screws into the foam um, right at the, the edge above on the outside for the inner piece and then climbing in and tracing it and then cutting it down. After you have your two pieces, you can line them up. It doesn't have to be super precise. It can just be more or less in the middle, or you can measure um, around each side the, the distance of the overlap if you want to be a little bit more precise. And then you want to tape everything down all the way around. Um, you could also use glue. I kind of over-engineered it and used glue and tape, but you basically want these pieces to be together really solidly. Um, because of the, the size that I cut for the, um, the inside piece, I ended up taping two pieces together to make a bigger thing, then tracing it, then cutting it, and then just gluing it in place, and it worked totally fine. So after you have these two pieces joined together, you want to protect it from the water. Um, and for this, I used the first tarp, and I actually smoothed out the tarp and then set the lid into the container where I wanted it to rest. And the reason for this was I didn't want to accidentally pull it too tight and not have the tarp have enough give to be able to drop into the top of the cold plunge. Also, when you, when you're originally cutting it, you may want to cut a little bit of an angle because of the way that the sides angle in so that you can, um, get an extra tight, smooth fit. So if the, um, the, the lowest part of where this sits is broader than the, the top of the inside piece, it's gonna, it won't sit in as, as nicely. So I recommend checking the fit before you start with the tarp. But then once I had it in, I just folded the tarp all around and taped it in place. Now this ends up looking kind of messy, um, but it did completely cover um, with a six by eight foot tarp. I cut off the edges of the tarp because the um, reinforced sides were going to be a little harder to work with and uh, just taped that into place. I used two different kinds of tape. I used the, um, the easier, more, um, more conformable tape to tape the two pieces together, but then I used uh, Gorilla Tape or Duct Tape or T-Rex Tape to um, tape the tarp in place because I felt like that would that would just hold a little better. Um, now the optional part that I added on, I just wanted this to look a little nicer and not have quite so much duct tape showing. So I took another tarp, laid the um, cover on top of it, traced the outer edge, leaving a few inches all the way around, and then folded it over and taped the, the sides all around in place. So that covered and protected the duct tape on the top and allowed it to just be a little more protected. And then I went back and took that um, edge that I had cut off and taped it around the outer edge just to give it a little bit of a lip to have it hang down. Now, this cover is very light, so there's a vulnerability if you get a windy day that it could be lifted off your cold plunge. And if it's a super windy day, perhaps even carried away. So I went ahead and put some straps across the top. You can get them on Amazon and cut them to your, um, your length. Now these won't hold up, you know, they'll, they'll break down with the sun, but they're pretty cheap to, you know, just replace that nylon nylon strap. Um, there are other approaches, of course, that you could use. Um, you could certainly use bungee cords or something, but it's just nice to have it have a, a bit of an anchor so it doesn't lift up and blow away after you've got this all in place. So random pro tip, the, um, the high metal tape um, is very conformable, which is nice. It kind of folds like aluminum foil, um, but the edges can be a little bit sharp. So just be aware that you want to proceed with a bit of care so you don't um, create little tiny cuts. They, they didn't go deep, but I ended up with a little, uh, a few little tiny shallow slices as the result of um, working with that particular tape. Also, this style of cover can be used on just about any container you want to use for the cold plunge. Um, you just adjust the dimensions accordingly to whatever size your container is. 
So there you have it. Between the cover and the insulation I taped around the outside, the water inside will stay up to 25 degrees cooler than the heat of the day, which given that a large block of ice brings the temperature down about 5 degrees, is a wonderful thing for the amount of ice required. I hope this is helpful and inspires you for your own do-it-yourself cold plunge adventures.